Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Brent Shire, and I'm with PB Sheffler. Um, I'm just going to walk, take a couple minutes, and walk through the site, how we're actually laying it out, um, and then just open up the floor to any comments, questions from you guys, as well as from the general public. Can you use the microphone? I'll actually hold this one. Yeah. yeah. They can hear you better in the back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Everybody can hear? Okay. All right, so the site, um, the site is 104 acres. There was um, some confusion, I believe, there was one six. Um, the portion that's labeled site 1A, this portion up on the screen, I have to grab. So the, over, the overall site, that we have surveyed is 126 acres. And that includes roughly 22 acres to the north of McConnell Road. We are actually not going to be purchasing that for development. So if we get our tenant approval, our final PRD approval, we'll actually create a subdivision plan which will subdivide that portion off so that it's not included in our development, which is highlighted in the red up on the screen. And what's the total acreage on that again? Why is That is 104.2. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So going into the overall site plan, as Andy had mentioned, we're looking to create a offer a variety of products here. So we'll be accessing the site via McConnell Road. And as you enter into the site, the lots or shown in blue uh, would be the attached uh, townhomes. As you come across the trail, uh, Mandy had also mentioned that we're going to separate that crossing. We want to try and create um, a safe environment for both the people using the trail um, as well as our residents. So we're going to do a separated crossing. And as you come across the portion of the southern uh, side of the trail or site, you also notice that there are going to be townhomes located um, on the southern portion of the trail as well. The idea and the methodology behind this is that we're trying to activate the trail as much as possible to put um, some of our denser products along that trail so that it creates a good connection and activates that trail, gets people out, makes them use it. As we continue through the site, uh, we go to the green areas, which would be the duplex products, and then we that creates a transition between the town owned products in blue to the single family lots, which would be um, identified in the peach color on the screen. So overall, there are 291 lots at a density of 2.8. Uh, for PRDs, the maximum density that is permitted is 8 units per acre. So we are well below. That's just not. <laughs> As part of the reduction of the hunt to, to 104 acres, have you correspondingly reduced the Cur number? That's correct. We are at about 298 before. We were at 298. I, I believe that's what I have. Yeah. 298 when we first came for PRD inside was a fault. Yeah. Yes. The number, the number that we proposed originally in the conceptual site plan when we went for the rezoning was higher than what we have now. And how many is it now? It is 291. 291. Previously it was two, I believe it was 295 on the conceptual site plan. Okay, now it's 291. Yes, ma'am. So you've reduced it. Uh, it's four lots. Five or four prob four residences? Yes. Um, for 22 acres. Yeah, the overall the, the two the two point eight is calculated for that the hundred and four. Alright, but it's still the same thing. Okay. <laughs> we'll we'll move on. Um, the open space that's there is uh, 41.6 acres, which is roughly 40% of the site. Uh, the open space is located uh, pretty much around the perimeter of the site. Uh, what this helps do um, is create additional buffer uh, from our development to the adjacent sites. Also, it helps to protect, in this location, there is a, a ravine and a, a water channel that we're trying to protect and prevent grading from going into those locations so that we can try and protect some of the existing vegetation. Then, <laughs> if it keeps going in and out, guys, I apologize. Okay. So, um, ultimately, 
we have the access on McConnell and then the um, we will transition through the single family homes and ultimately we can have a second point of access on Burnside Road. Um, something to note here is that from PRDs, PRDs are only permitted to access arterials and collectors per the code. Burnside Road is a local road. Um, we see this as uh, it's going to need a waiver or a modification, however you guys determine it needs to be handled. However, we see it as a benefit to both us and to uh, Cecil Township, and then we're providing two points of access. Uh, what two points of access helps to do is create multiple opportunities for emergency providers to access the development, as well as dispersing traffic. If we were to create a dead end and not connect to Burnside Road, potentially all this traffic is coming out onto McConnell Road. So multiple points of connections helps to disperse that traffic. When you say Burnside Road is a local road, is yes, that, that was not one of the choices, was it? So either Collector Road or an arterial road? Correct. And what is Burnside Road? Burnside is a local road. What's the difference? Classification is deterred. It's, it's partly classified by um, Cecil Township and then by criteria um, with the county. So by the code, I believe that it has to do with the width of the road and the amount of traffic. Is that correct, Dan? I believe it. I think that with Cecil Township's code, it's primarily to do with width. But it's also been cited that uh, with county requirements, it's due to the average state of trips as well. So McConnell is designated as a collector, which we agree to, and Birdsign is local. So as you go from local to collector arterial, you're basically saying there's a higher level of traffic as you go from local to arterial. terms of grading, what we're looking at, uh, there are, there is going to be two wa waivers that we have requested. The first one we're actually going to be um, not requesting that waiver. There was a portion of property along McConnell Road in which two lots were going to be encroaching into the 50-foot perimeter setback that's required. Uh, we are actually working um, to try and attempt to purchase that property so that that buffer is now, rather than being on our property in this location, it will be along McConnell Road. So our lots will no longer encroach into that 50-foot setback. It will actually be along McConnell. Is that one of the two waivers you were requesting? So now you're only requesting one? Correct. Okay. Correct. So the other waiver that we'll continue to request is grading with the portions of the 50-foot so on the screen, the area highlighted in green is the 50-foot uh, perimeter buffer, and you can see that there are orange areas where we will be grading into uh, that buffer. Code requires that uh, that perimeter buffer remain in a natural state and that you not grade within it. Um, topography is a challenge on this site, and where possible, we try to reduce the amount of cut and fill. That's what the PRD is offer us the ability to do with. The smaller lots, the smaller setbacks, it's enabled us to reduce the cut and fill numbers. However, there are certain locations where we still have to encroach into that. Uh, through the final grading, we're going to try and reduce it again as much as possible. However, there are going to, are going to be some areas where we will have to encroach. So, um, what we're proposing, the locations where we will be encroaching are adjacent to properties that are undeveloped and largely wooded. Um, the portion along the trail. This trail is actually buried down. So if you're walking on a trail and looking to the left, our site will be up above. So we will be grading into those areas. However, um, it will not be that large an impact because our site will actually, the homes will actually be up on top of the hill. The portion along, this is an un 
unfinished portion of the trail. So that right there functions as a buffer to existing uh, residential homes that are here. Uh, but we will be encroaching into uh, this portion of the site. However, that existing unfinished trail acts as a buffer now. Uh, one thing that we're proposing to do is in the areas where we are encroaching, we're going to go ahead and plant uh, trees and shrubs to help achieve the intent of the ordinances, ordinance, which is to make that part of the buffer natural. So as the process continues forward, we get the tentative and final PRD, we will provide a landscape plan with our uh, preliminary subdivision and final subdivision to show how we can revegetate those areas after we do the study. Stormwater management will be taken care of through a series of five stormwater facilities. They are located here along Burnside, is one. Two in the middle of the middle of development. There's a third. The fourth is located here. And the fifth is at the end of the cul de sac for the towns. So as we can see forward, we'll do detailed, detailed stormwater report. We provide an initial summary of our intent of the design. That is being reviewed by your, um, your engineering consultants, and we'll provide additional information as we move forward with detailed engineering for those facilities. One thing that was brought up with the Planning Commission was how does construction traffic get to the site? Uh, I believe there's been some current concerns with um, developments that are occurring right now. Uh, one Planning Commissioner had a comment that he didn't want construction traffic to come on that angle road. So our proposal is that any construction traffic coming from the north will come 50 and then down McConnell Bishop onto McConnell and anything from, coming from the south will come from 980 up, use Bishop or up, or inside, whatever is the most amendment to the touch. 